Kelsey Show. I'm your host, Detroit Kelsey. Today we are highlighting a couple of events that are going on during the month of October. With me is Emily Stewart, Shirley Uyi, and Bruce Gorman Jr. Emily Stewart has a film festival she does every year called October, October Film Fest. Later on, we will be talking to Kira Queen. Queen, Miss Queen. I was thinking about Queen of Fool was here last week. And she's a fitness and expert uh, person that works at Harlem Hospital. She will be talking about Girl Track, how they are commemorating Fannie Lou Hamer during the month of October. But first, let's check out this video and we'll be right back. Okay, until they get that together. And so this is sort of the answer to all the things that I've seen um, that were missing. And some of it is just, you know, the individual attention to the filmmakers, um, teaching. We know, we're known for being a teaching festival. Um, and so those are the things I think that, you know, yeah. why we stand out. I Well, I just love how much October Film Fest is putting out really independent work and uh, a lot of local uh, artists here in the city and doing their music videos and their feature films. And also the fact that the founder is a woman of color and the support that she's given to the filmmakers. So it feels like you're at home because on some other festivals you feel lost. You know, there's no connection, your film is green and that's it. Never really meet the founder and never feel like the filmmakers are being supported. Welcome to October Fest 2016, the fourth annual festival. And today we have a block of films that we're gonna show you. What the film was, was done in the form that it was done because we wanted to achieve um, you getting the culture piece of it, understanding that there is struggle and that you still need to respect family, government, and the way of life. It's very inspiring, you know, because there's so many stories to be told and it's very gratifying as well because it's so hard a lot of times as independent filmmakers to make our work, but to have a chance to screen it on the big screen and to meet other filmmakers and introduce it to new audiences, we just have to thank October Film Festival for the opportunity. Of like my life <laughs> so both sides you know so it just made me realize like oh my gosh Kim you have to set your price you know it was almost like I was giving myself advice my character was giving even though I was talking to her I was giving myself advice so that was a great moment for me so very interested in telling a story through documentary film the most important thing is to be curious is to ask questions and uh, the film finds you I think is the thing that I found most powerful in this film took about two and a half years to make um, it was a collaborative effort by a group of over 40, 45 people. Uh, they all collected their talents, their abilities, from musicians to actors, the film crew. Uh, 
We all put all our two cents together where currency did not stand in the way. <coughs> and we made a feature film for less than 10 grand and we just want something for it. I think that people think this is a hobby. Our families think, you know, get a real job, right? How many of you hear that all the time? And so we, we want to give you whatever we can so that this could be your bread and butter. I'm not concerned about being big, I'm concerned about being effective. Okay, so thank you everyone, because I couldn't do this without you. Thank you for letting us screen your films, they were amazing. Um, I can't even tell you, I cried, I laughed, I went through all these emotions <laughs> watching all these films. And thank you, and please stay in touch, we have some resources for you. Welcome back. Again, this is Dietra Kelsey, host of Sister Talk TV show. And what we're doing is highlighting a couple of events that are going on during the month of October. Again, right sitting next to me is Emily Stewart, CEO and founder of October Film Fest, a video that you just saw that was a recap of last year's festival. Sitting next to her is Shirley Uyi. And sitting next to Shirley is Bruce Gorman, Junior, correct? <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you for coming to Sister Talk TV show and talking about October Film Fest. Now, you know, I'm just going to start with you, Emily. And say, what, what inspired you? What really inspired you to start October Film Fest? I got to tell you, watching the video again, it's, mm -hmm. it's amazing how when you're in it, you miss so much. Oh, okay. Um, and thank you for having us. I really appreciate this is you. This your have second been, time. Yes, <laughs> yes. You have always been so supportive, and we appreciate it. Oh, because, thank you. Because, you know, the independent filmmakers really need... Mm -hmm. um, um, the support. Mm -hmm. So I am a producer, mm -hmm. um, so I produce films, and I have been in a ton of film festivals, and I realized that there was something missing. Mm -hmm. And although I think we need a lot of different festivals because they meet a lot of different needs, mm -hmm. I really felt that there was, you know, uh, stuff that was missing. Like, we're more of a teaching festival. Mm -hmm. We provide resources. Mm -hmm. um, this mm -hmm. year we're doing a short film pe pitch, and mm -hmm. whoever wins, we're producing their short film. So how did you start? You were a filmmaker before mm -hmm, you got mm -hmm. to became a producer, yes. right? What film was that? So the first one was... First one? Yeah, my first one was Wings. <laughs> well, I'm, I think I'm 18 or 19 in now. Okay. But yeah, the first one was Wings and Beer, and it's just, you know, I'm really a business person. Somebody mm -hmm. gave me a script, I read it, and I thought it was really funny, and I mm -hmm. called the guy, and I said, what do you need? He said everything. So you, you directed <laughs> it? No, I just produced it. Oh, you produced it, yeah, okay. Yeah, that okay. means I paid all the bills. <laughs> <laughs> and so you like doing that, and said, why not do a festival? <laughs> well, I said, you know what, how, how do we make money? How do uh -huh. we, you know... Mm -hmm. How can I help other people? And so, and that's what it was really. Mm -hmm. It's the business of it, and teaching filmmakers about the business side of it. How about the second film? The second film was Heads or Tails, mm -hmm. um, another short. And of course, you know, when you make a film and it wins a whole bunch of awards, you get inspired to mm -hmm. keep doing it, whether you're making money or not. So this is your what year doing October Film Fest? This is year five. Year five. This is our five? yeah year five. Wow. We are five years old this year. I want to uh, introduce uh, the other guests, the filmmakers yes, that you brought these are, over here. These are opening night filmmakers. Mm. Um, the feature filmmaker, Tony Parker, couldn't be here, but these are the two short films that okay. are opening up the festival on Thursday. Okay, let's start with you, Shirley. What's the name of your film? My film is Silence. Silence. Yes. Okay. And how long is that? It's a uh, total runtime of four minutes and 58 seconds, so it's really short. Okay, so... Yeah. But powerful. Yes. Yeah, I, you know, I notice when I go to these film festivals, especially yours, a lot of these short films are powerful, and they get work from that and mm -hmm. all that. Bruce, what's the um, name of your film? Uh, it's called Thurman Comes Home. Thurman Comes Home, and how long is that? About eight minutes. Eight minutes, okay. In, in a nutshell, without uh, giving out any spoilers, could you all tell me what your film is about? 
Sure. Um, so silence is about a young woman mm -hmm. who finds herself in a depressed episode, mm -hmm. but then she must ra rise and uh, go help someone else in need. Okay, how about yourself, Bruce? Uh, Thurman Comes Home is about a homeless fellow who's um, on the street on a very cold night and he's met by a mentor uh, he hasn't seen in years and he goes over, reflects on his life. He's met by a mentor that hasn't seen in years? Correct. So um, tell me the, not the joy, you know, people think making films are so, so easy. T tell us about the difficulty of making those films, you know, the, <laughs> the obstacles that you, you, heard, you went over to make those that film. So um, this film is actually my first uh, film that I directed. And oh, wow. um, to great. write it, of course, is it's not easy, mm -hmm. you know, um, bringing something to life and to fruition. Mm -hmm. It's my first film that I was actually a part of as far as directing and, uh, yeah, the directing, the casting. Mm -hmm. So it was tough because I was just learning. Mm -hmm. um, it, yeah, I was just learning. And, of course, like, you get all these submissions. and So you didn't major, you didn't study filmmaking? No, I'm actually a registered nurse. And I've always had a, a calling to write and to create. So was that your inspiration to write the film, that short film, because you witnessed some of this, this, these, these things that were going on in the hospital? Or? Yes, I worked as a psychiatric nurse for about four years. Mm. So I wanted to give a voice to mental health and mental mm. illness. So that's what inspired me to write the film. How about yourself, um, Bruce? Um, I think it, as a general matter, I don't have any complaints. We had a lot of blessings um, with the Thurman shoot. No um, complaints? No complaints, no. <laughs> no uh, complaints. Actually, we even that's, had, that's we had awesome. I think the worst thing that happened was we had a, a couple of people walk through the set and disrupt uh, the filmmaking, and one of which upset my lead actor, Richard Bird, who gave a terrific performance. Um, but even that we turned into a positive because he, he was so riled up, I said, Richard, use this mm -hmm. and put this into this next take or two, and, and he did, and he got even better. So it was, it was kind of a, you know, a thousand blessings. Uh, did production. you study filmmaking? No, no, I did not. Really? So you all just picked up a camera and just started shooting? I mean, how did you all, I mean, you, you never studied it no. and something told you just to do this. How did you get the the ability, how did you learn to do something like that? That's what I'm trying to figure out. Because everybody who's watching, they want to do something like you and who's never studied. Well, um, I, I've always written poetry, oh, really? um, okay. and I taught myself how to write film. Mm -hmm. So I, I've watched really good films, mm -hmm. and um, I made sure to reach out to professionals. So I had a professional cinematographer, professional editor, makeup artist. Mm -hmm. I was the only amateur on set, and I wanted it to be that way. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good So approach. just get good yeah. people together, mm -hmm. and yeah. Yeah, I think uh, kind of a similar description. I felt like I'm the only one on set who doesn't know what he's doing. Um, I had a, the short answers are people who do know how to make films. I'm not one of them, but mm -hmm. I've made this one. And uh, Raphael Moses was the director of photography. Did a okay. wonderful job. So you, and, uh, you did direct, of course. Yeah. Oh yeah. No, he. Yeah, but the having people who do know how to handle the camera and the sound and all that. The professionals are out there. It's really just a question of you know, moving forward with it and you can make a film. So mm -hmm. tell us about the audition process because you all took this very seriously. Did you all hire your friends or did you hire people for one reason, for <laughs> one thing, did you hire people? For I have um, one lead actress. Mm -hmm. um, so it, I posted castings on mm -hmm. Facebook and I actually had people submit their videos. Okay. Um, I had over a hundred submissions. Really? Yes. Okay. Um, okay. This project was actually for a contest that Glamour Magazine is um, holding. So right. I think that attracted a lot of actresses too. So I saw a lot of videos, mm -hmm. yeah. So how about yourself? Uh, I actually didn't do casting for Thurman. It was originally for a class uh, I was taking at the School of Visual Arts. And oh, okay. uh, they found Richard and Wesley, but they happened to be perfect for the parts. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I saw them, I really liked them, and that's, you know, decided that they were, they were the guys to, for when we filmed it for real. I understand when you shot your film, it was very cold. That's why I was asking about the difficulty. <laughs> how cold was that? It was 18 degrees, um, which was amazing because the, the script said it was an 18 degree night, um, mm -hmm. which has meaning for me um, in terms of helping 18 homeless degrees? people. 18, 18 degrees and snowing, yeah. yeah. Um, so when you, snowing? when you see the movie, when you see Richard mm -hmm. sitting on the street on a box doing his performance, he's literally freezing his butt off, um, but nailing the part anyway. Um, so it was, it was very, very cold. I don't know how we didn't get pneumonia, but we, we <laughs> pulled it off. So how long did it take to do this, like four minute or eight minute uh, film. Sure. Um, 
Well, we shot for 13 hours. It was a wow. one-day shoot. That included lunch. I wanted to feed everyone <laughs> still. <laughs> As a nurse, I have to take care of people. So, yeah, it was about 18 hours. I mean, 13 hours. 13 hours. Yeah. How about yeah. yourself? Ours was, was a single day on a Saturday. And, single uh, day? How many hours, though? i say we did, I think, four hours in the morning in New Jersey. Mm -hmm. And then we did, um, I guess, eight hours or seven hours um, in the evening from 5.30 till about so 1. So everything was in one location? Yes. So you also Frost was uh, in Edison, New Jersey, and then uh, locally in Manhattan for the night scene. So what do you all expect from doing these films? What do you think you're getting out of it? What oh. do you want to get out of it? The satisfaction of sharing something that I created mm -hmm. um, to be able to enjoy it over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. It's tangible. Mm -hmm. How about yeah. yourself? Um, exact same things that Shirley said. It's, it's very satisfying to, you know, we're, we haven't made money at this yet, but this is better than making money. It's really great to say we have a film and to be accepted into the October Film Fest is very satisfying. And, and meeting a lot of great people like the actors um, Richard and Wesley I've met and um, folks at the festivals, I mean, this is, it's just a very, very neat experience. Emily, uh, how did, Emily, how did you pick these two filmmakers to be your opening um, show? It was tough. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was tough. So I don't do um, the selecting, and I was talking to Shirley uh, off camera mm -hmm. earlier, how I just, I give away the store, so there are people in charge of making sure that um, mm -hmm. that doesn't happen. But we had great judges. Um, and uh, Antoine Allen, who's the festival producer, mm -hmm. um, he helps out a lot with kind of coordinating that. Mm -hmm. um, and so the judges give the films a rating. Mm -hmm. There's a rating system. Mm -hmm. um, and so we picked our top rated mm -hmm. ones. Uh, and so that's how they ended up being the opening night film. So you enjoy being the CEO and founder, also your producer. Mm -hmm. What have you gotten out of being uh, the CEO and founder and producer of October Film Fest? You've done other, th other things also, yeah, right? Yeah, you know, I think for me is being able to do it my way. I think there's tremendous power in that. Mm -hmm. I think that when you are visiting someone else's shop, you mm -hmm. have to do it their way. Right. Um, I get to create what I want to see. Mm -hmm. And I get to show the things that I think are important that people need to see. I think there are filmmakers that nobody has ever heard of that mm. have amazing talent, mm -hmm. um, tremendous passion. Mm -hmm. And to be able to give them a platform and a voice mm -hmm. is, is for me unbelievably gratifying. Unbelievably gratifying. Yeah. You, know, you said that you teach, so you also have um, workshops and all that? We do. We have workshops um, because I think part of what happens is the filmmakers are so caught up in telling the story mm -hmm. uh, with the creative side of things mm -hmm. that they don't think about, well, once this movie's done, mm -hmm. how am I going to make my money back? Mm -hmm. Especially when you went to investors to get money. Right. That's my next question. Yeah. How, how much did it cost to do these films? Is that a secret? <laughs> is that a secret? <laughs> most filmmakers, sometimes it's a secret. I mean, even yeah. if it's to, I mean, I, I, I was looking at the video, and one guy said it cost, uh, he did it less than $2,000. Is that realistic? That is not realistic, I think. Um, but then you have a lot of people with passion and talent. Mm -hmm. um, I know that the feature film that won last year, I think he spent $10,000. Mm. Um, but it took him two years to make it. Wow. So um, when you don't have the money, mm -hmm. then, you know, you have to cut a lot of corners. So how did you, you know, I'm asking this, this question because... <laughs> I was trying to save oh, yeah. you from having to answer that. <laughs> Thank <Yeah>. you. <laughs> this is a teaching moment. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. there are people, how did you all get the money? How, do you mind saying the budget or do you not want to? Um, I will, I'll move on if you don't want to. <laughs> how about yourself? That was Bruce? very low budget. My, my was very my low budget. Self, yeah, self-financed, uh, shoestring yeah. budget. Um, shoestring. Just, you know. What's a shoestring budget then? <laughs> <laughs> no, because I, she's not. Oh, let him answer yeah. that. I, I say low, low thousands. I mean, it's you know, if you got below, below five thousand. Yeah, I would say. Yeah, if you want to have a professional crew, I mean, you know, mm -hmm. I had to ask people to work for less, and they did, and I really appreciate it. But yeah, mm -hmm. you you got to put something up to get people who know what they're doing, so you have a, a film that looks professional. Is this your last film that you all going to make? Oh no, this is my first film, so I'm just getting started. Yeah, 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 same thing. I, I have a, another film in the works. So. so is it going to be a short film or? No, it's a feature. A feature film. Yeah, yeah. we're in post-production on. So. Yeah. 
Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, it used to be that short films were like a calling card, mm -hmm. um, and you would make it in the hopes that people would see it and you'd get more work. I think today, short films, because, you know, all the major networks are showing mm -hmm. short films. Mm -hmm. um, I know I've had my short film on CBS. Mm. So because, um, you know, short films are now needed and it's mm -hmm. content that people want also because of online digital mm -hmm. right you want to have short content mm -hmm. you know short films are really important and there's a demand for them mm -hmm. um, so there's so much more you can do with them these days a lot of people don't know that uh, a lot of actors and filmmakers got their start from short films. yes and one that comes to mind is Vin Diesel yes uh, mm -hmm. uh, I think his short film went to Cannes yep and Steven Spielberg saw it and uh, uh, cast him in uh, Saving Private Ryan. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Saving Private Ryan. His you know career just yep. took off yep. and all that. So a lot of people don't know how important short films are, mm -hmm. and they're very, very good at that. You know, very it is very difficult to tell a good, compelling story in a short period of time because you 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 have a limited amount of resources and time and talent and you have to be able to tell a story from beginning to end mm -hmm. in, in a, it, it's incredibly difficult. Okay, so we're gonna close this session up and we're gonna go ahead and talk to Ketora Queen of Girl Track and she's gonna talk about the upcoming event in October commemorating my Shiro, Fanny Lou Hamer. We'll be right back. But they're telling me the video is not ready. <laughs> so we're going to keep talking about filmmaking and all of that. So, Emmalyn, how long do you expect to and keep And I thought I was off the hook. <laughs> yeah, you thought you were off the hook, yeah. Emmalyn, you have made some strides. I do know that. You have produced major uh, feature movies and all that. One that starred Lynn Whitfield. Uh, it was up and coming a director. What was the name of that movie again? That actually, that was in our festival, mm -hmm. um, and it was Thomas Phillips. Yeah, and he's so. actually uh, working on a series. Yes, yeah, so, yes. Yeah, so we're mm -hmm. excited. We're actually casting for that. I'm one mm -hmm. of the producers on that. Mm -hmm. um, we just did Title Seven, which was about same race discrimination. Mm -hmm. um, so you know, part of being able to produce is being able to tell stories that matter to me, mm -hmm. especially if um, I'm investing in it myself. <laughs> right? Because it's one thing, mm -hmm. you know. So did you invest in that movie, money-wise, monetary? All of the films, I, I definitely invest my own money, um, which is why it's important that they generate a return. So in addition to being the producer, I'm off, often the investor as well. You have done theater also, right? Yes, I did one theater that almost killed me. What <laughs> was that? The hardest <laughs> thing. <laughs> it was the hardest thing I've ever done. I did four weeks five nights a week, off, not off Off-Broadway, but Off-Broadway, um, and it was tough. It was, it was... It's very physical. It's very physical, it's emotionally draining, mm -hmm. um, and if you're sitting there watching every night, you can tell when the actors aren't really doing what they're supposed mm -hmm. to, and it's live, so it's not like you can say cut, <laughs> <laughs> right? Um, and it just, the interaction of watching a live audience, mm -hmm. And you know whether they fall asleep or <laughs> or start yawning well, or whatever. I don't, happens. I, I don't think it's, they. I, but it it it's really um, I found it emotionally draining. Emotionally draining than making a film thirteen hours in eighteen degree because weather. <laughs> <laughs> you know what though? I, I think it's because I think it's because your margin for error is so small with live. Mm. stuff you mm -hmm. know if, if like this yeah. yes like this <laughs> exactly exactly when you're making a film you know you can always fix it in editing mm -hmm. you can shoot again you mm -hmm. can there's a lot of things you can do when you're doing a play and it's live and the audience is sitting there you know or people are watching <laughs> a live show it's um it's not that easy i and i know that you have I know that you have a great play. Yeah, um, it's, it's, it's coming out. We just yeah, yeah, the year, yeah. I'm having a big and reading. I support, you know, the arts and everything. But I just find like producing theater. theater is is really. I have a newfound respect for that. And the actors, oh my god, <laughs> <laughs> it's just unbelievable. Especially singers. 
But anyway, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Anyway, your your next film. What do you can you tell us what that's going to be about? Is it still going to have that that dark? She's actually oh. pitching it. Aren't you pitching I it am. at the festival? Yes, yes. I am uh -huh. pitching yes. the film. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's uh, oh, um, you go, it's going to be uh -huh. longer, mm -hmm. uh, fifteen minutes. Um, oh, that's great. And, yeah. and it just shows um, it, it shows the conflicting, I guess, dynamic of vengeance and forgiveness. Oh wow! Yeah. How about yourself? Uh, my next film. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a feature film. It's, uh, it's called The Clown. Um, we've already shot it, so we're in post production. We're um, doing the color correction stage, and it's a, mm. it's about a, a guy who um, works in a corporate job, and his life is a mess, and he's harassed every day as he goes in and out of work mm -hmm. by a dark clown that lives in mm -hmm. the parking lot of his employer mm -hmm. uh, that only he can see, and that's wow. the, the like setup. an imaginary clown. Uh, the clown is there. Okay. But uh, that's scary. only he that's can see it. That's interesting. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I want to see that. <laughs> yeah, me too. You know, the clowns are in now. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I, I'm seeing so many more storylines. I know people, clowns. I mean, people, kids are opening a door and they see a clown there. You know, people yeah. are pranking with yeah. clowns. I didn't know a lot of people were scared of clowns. I love clowns. My clown brother song. was growing up. He was petrified. Really? Of clowns? clowns? Yeah. We had a Spanish clown on one of the Spanish channels. And every time that clown, <laughs> <laughs> he would leave, he would run out of the room so yeah mm. so what do you think about um, the future of filmmaking since it's becoming economical to make films you yeah. know but you know as it becomes more economical it's also becoming more competitive right right because now there's just so much content mm -hmm. um, but I think the opportunities are there mm -hmm. I have a segment at the festival for young adults mm. which is movies created by teens uh -huh. Um, and so even young people, now you can start even younger because the investment is not that much. They can shoot films on iPhones these days. Yes, I know. Um, yeah. yeah, so mm -hmm. um, I think it's amazing. I think just tremendous opportunity. What about yourself? Yeah, I agree with what Emmeline said. You can really grab a camera mm -hmm. phone and mm -hmm. make a film. Mm -hmm. How about yourself? Yeah. Yeah, I, I think that the future of film, if you, especially if you really like movies, you should go to these festivals like the October Film Fest or the Validate yeah. Yourself mm -hmm. Film Festival. I was just at. You see really interesting, you know, work that's being done mm -hmm. by people who I don't think could have afforded to do it 10 years ago because yeah. of the technology and it's better than when I see it at the theaters and it doesn't cost you know me $35 to get in you know to see the Hollywood <laughs> film uh, so I think the future of film is what you're gonna see at these festivals. Mm -hmm. What do you think about reality TV versus filmmaking? I was on a reality show a couple of years yes, ago. Yes I remember that yes. you get around. Yes. Don't you? yes. Uh -huh. I think reality TV is work. I think that it's hard work. Do you um, think it's creative? I you talk about improv. I have friends in reality TV, so I'm being very careful about okay. how I answer this. <laughs> but uh, I will say that I think um, that it is creative in its own way. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I think the reality of it is, is, it is compelling, and it's what drives us to watch it. I love some of the reality shows. Um, you know, and some of it I can relate to, and some of it I can't. I see that look on your face. You know, I, I saw the first episode of Survivor, Survival, Survivor, and I said I would never watch another reality, because I got really involved in it, and emotional, and then... Did that translate into it being creative for you, or is it more... No, I thought it was voyeurism. More okay. than anything. Okay. Yeah, you know, there is that, an aspect of that for sure. And I just thought that people were. But it's consensual. Bought, it's consensual, yeah. I just thought that people's emotions were coming out mm -hmm. where they wouldn't have displayed it anywhere else. How about yourself yeah. about reality TV? Um, I, I think it depends on what kind of show it is. Mm -hmm. If it's love and hip hop versus like America's Next Top Model where you're competing for a prize, you know, mm -hmm. they you still have to be great. creative as far right. as the, the, the photo shoots and the challenges that they have. So I think it really just depends on the type of show. Okay, how about yourself? Um, confess I don't watch a lot of reality TV. I think that the Great British Baking Show is as much into it as I get, and I don't even know if that qualifies. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay, they tell me that the video is ready. Awesome. So we're going to go to video break and we'll be right back. Hi, this is Dietrich Kelsey, host of Sister Talk TV show. And what you're watching is Sister Talk after the live telecast. With me from the live telecast is Bruce Gorman Jr. He's one of the participants in the October Film 
Festival that's happening here in New York City in October. Bruce, thank you for staying after the show. Oh, thank you for having me on the show. Bruce, I want to talk to you about your short film, Thurman Comes Home. For just tell us what's that? What is that all about? Uh, the film it's about a, uh, a, a homeless guy who's been on has spent his entire life on the street or in prison, and mm -hmm. um, it's a very cold night, and he's met by a, a, an old mentor of his that he hasn't seen in years. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, he ends up reflecting on his life and mm -hmm. kind of what he's been through. What made you, what inspired you to write this? Um, it, it's a tricky answer. Um, I think that I had to do a writing assignment for a class mm -hmm. to write three pages about something happening outside at, at night. Mm -hmm. And um, I basically kind of, I didn't have any agenda or story in mind. I just mm -hmm. kind of made myself available to, mm -hmm. for something, um, I think a little more spiritual was my intention. Oh, really? Wow. And this is what came through. Mm -hmm. um, it, but the story itself is based on my experiences with uh, feeding the homeless myself and uh, oh, really? a, a fellow I knew once uh, who lived, I think, a similar life mm -hmm. um, but didn't have a, a, a mentor to help him, didn't have anybody helping him. Mm -hmm. um, so in some ways it's a homage to him. Oh, really? Yeah. You know, during the break we were talking about uh, how everybody is having a hard time yeah. and all that. And uh, I know you spoke during... Uh, the live telecast that you're working on a feature is in post-production right now. Yes. And it's about a clown. Does that deal with the, the struggles in life also? Yes. Um, that's more in the, um, uh, it's not a dark comedy per se. It's not a comedy. It's a drama, but mm -hmm. it's, it's, it has a little bit of um, humor in it. Mm -hmm. um, the main character is a fellow named Barnaby, and he mm -hmm. sees this dark clown. The dark clown kind of menaces him every day as he goes in and out of work. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, there's, you know, I guess connotations to that, and that the main character is going through having a rough time, but mm -hmm. uh, is about his, uh, his journey through that. How does your film um, relate to what's happening today? Uh, which film? The Thurman? Both of th well, let's talk about Thurman, yes. Thurman, um, I mean, you know, at least on its face, it's it's, it's about a, a guy who spends his whole life on the street. He doesn't didn't have a support structure, um, didn't believe in himself, didn't mm -hmm. have anybody to really help him, and it, it, it's kind of a redemption story in that sense. So, you have you met people like that when you were feeding the homeless? They have been out on the streets a long time, all mostly all their life. Um, the I didn't get to know people in that great a depth. Um, mm -hmm. The first. The first time I ever went out to feed anybody who was homeless was uh, in Philadelphia is where I would feed the homeless. Um, mm -hmm. I had this sense that I was going to meet somebody named Moses, and sure enough, I met a guy really? named wow. Moses who was from North Carolina. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I, I talked to him, and, and it's like talking, like us talking right now. It's a mm -hmm. regular conversation. Um, and, you know, I said, you know, I have, you know, do you want to call somebody from home? Like, what, mm -hmm. you know, what's the story? And um, I didn't get to find, I mean, I, I found a little bit about him, but not everything. And, mm -hmm. and of course, there's a question of, you know, why is he on the street and why is he, you mm -hmm. know, it's cold out, why are you there? And you don't really find out, you don't really know what somebody's going through. And mm -hmm. I think that's part of what the, I guess, the Thurman story touches on mm -hmm. and what you and I were talking about, I think, before we mm -hmm. started this interview is that a lot of people are having a really hard time mm -hmm. and you don't know their backstory. And that's important mm -hmm. not to judge. It's not, it's important to be compassionate, mm -hmm. um, I think. Your next film that's in post-production Clown. I mean, clown, where did you yeah. get this idea from? That's that's really interesting. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was shot. I wanted to do a, um, a well, you know, I knew it would be low budget, so I wanted to film it in you know locations I could do. And uh, one day I was getting into my car at work, and I had an image I saw in my mind's eye a, a, a guy who was dealing with some dark clown who was harassing him as he was kind of dealing with him as he was getting into his car and he had to negotiate with this clown and mm -hmm. it was just part of his daily life. And, and so I kind of. <laughs> filed this idea away and mm -hmm. then one day started writing a short on it and the short turned into a feature and, and that's how we got where we are. So this is your first film, yes. um, Thurman Comes Home. Yeah. Did you always want to be a filmmaker? Yes. Oh really? Oh yeah. So you just picked up a camera, you directed it, you got a uh, director of uh, photography. Yep. Uh, you always wanted to be a film filmmaker, I mean you didn't go to class or you just picked it up? Yeah, I've, I've um, the key to it for me was I started finishing, uh, started fin I always wanted to write and mm -hmm. I started some things, but um, my older sister actually was a, was critical at helping me finish, mm -hmm. gave me some encouragement that helped me finish something, and so I started finishing things mm -hmm. in the last few years, and, I, and so the, um, I, I did The Clown first, I finished that screenplay mm -hmm. and was trying to 
Mm -hmm. You know, how do I, I don't know how to do a movie, and I bought books on it, and I was trying to find people, and it was really nowhere, but eventually met people, and the Thurman thing kind of happened in the middle, right before the clown started production, we did Thurman, and I got okay. to meet some neat um, people who are, you know, out of school and looking for work and okay. very talented. Um, so what do you <clears throat> want people to get out of Thurman Comes Home? Um, Thurman, I think it's the, I think it's just really being kind of compassionate. Um, mm -hmm. Generally, I think that that's the cure to all the ills, um, anything mm -hmm. we want to discuss. Um, if people are compassionate and with each other and with others themselves and mm -hmm. to their family, um, you know, I, so I think that's number one. And number two, I think all life has value. Um, mm -hmm. Everybody's birth on this planet is an event, should be an event. Mm -hmm. um, the day we, the day after we finished filming Thurman, mm -hmm. uh, the lead actor, Richard Bird, who gave up, well, I thought was a beautiful performance in, mm -hmm. in Thurman, as Thurman, um, he sent me a text that somebody had um, died on the street of the oh, cold. Oh, wow, wow. You know, and that guy, does he have family? Where, you know, what is his backstory? What mm -hmm. happened to this guy? I mean, his, his life has value. And mm -hmm. I think that, you know, if somebody takes that away from the film, you know, we'd be thrilled. You know, that was a lot of dedication for you all to shoot that in 18 degree weather. I keep <laughs> saying that because that it was like what 12 hours 13 hours or something like 18 well yes yeah, so we did in the morning for three four hours uh, mm -hmm. in the cold uh, you mm -hmm. see the young actor uh, levon tart who plays uh, young thurman in the flashback shots he's mm -hmm. he's acting and after about 20 minutes he's not acting he's genuinely freezing <laughs> 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 um i got him a pair of gloves after the production as a okay. kind of a joke but mm -hmm. um and then at night yeah we were there i think seven and a half hours um mm -hmm. on the street richard sitting on the street wesley's not wearing a jacket he's genuinely shaking. Mm -hmm. uh, we had to throw a jacket over him in between takes. Uh, but fortunately, he's very, uh, very diligent actor and didn't need, you know, quite as many takes or he would have frozen to death probably. So. Are you from New York? I'm from South Jersey, actually, South originally. Jersey? I came out, yeah. Okay. You know, thank you for staying after uh, the live telecast. I'm looking forward to come to October Film Festival to uh, look at your your short. Yeah, and thank looking, you. Hope you like it. Yeah, I think I will. I saw the trailer and I think it'll be really nice. Right, and you'll get to meet uh, Richard and Wesley who will uh, be there and probably Levon too. So. Okay. Thank you so thank much. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Hi, this is Dietrich Kelsey, host of Sister Talk TV show. And what you're watching is Sister Talk after the live telecast. With me from the live telecast is Shirley Uyi. She is the filmmaker, is one of the filmmakers at the October Film Festival, which is being held here in New York City. Shirley, thank you for staying after the live telecast. Thank you for having me. Shirley, your film is being featured on opening night. And it's called silence with yes. a semicolon. Yes. Why the semicolon? Okay, so the semicolon was, it, it's to pay homage to a, a campaign called Project Semicolon, oh. which was started by a young woman who says, mm -hmm. you are the author of your life. So where a period would be, you put a semicolon, which symbolizes that you continue. It's a campaign that's supposed to um, just raise awareness for suicide mm -hmm. prevention. So people actually have like the semicolon tattoos um, just showing their support for mental illness mm -hmm. and um, suicide prevention and some people who actually have um, maybe came to uh, came close to committing suicide. So your film is a short film and it's yes. about suicide. Um, it's about me it's 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 centered around depression and depression. mental illness. And the woman who's featured is a woman who's featured yes. on there. Yes. Yes. A black woman who's featured yep. on there. Mm -hmm. Why why that topic for your film? Well, it's something that I, I, I'm very passionate about, um, mental health and mental illness. Mm -hmm. um, as a healthcare professional myself, I feel like mental health and mental illness is a very underserved area of healthcare. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to pretty much um, give a voice to people who are suffering in silence. Mm -hmm. there's, such, there's so much of a stigma mm -hmm. that surrounds mental illness and um, mental health. People don't talk about it. So mm -hmm. I just felt like if this, film can serve as a conversation starter and more people would talk. Mm -hmm. If more people talk about it, more mm -hmm. people would talk about it. So you work as a registered nurse? Yes. In a, what department is that? Well, right now I do pediatrics, but mm -hmm. I worked as a psychiatric nurse for four years. So you've seen a lot of that sure. oh, yeah. illness. So where are you from? 
Um, ethnicity? <laughs> I'm from Nigeria, mm -hmm. and um, I've, I've always had something for creating. So you were born in Nigeria and you came here? Actually, no, I was born in the Philippines. I was born in the Philippines, yes. My dad went to med school there. My mom went to college there, too. Mm -hmm. So my brother and my sister and I were born in the Philippines. So what made you all come here? Well, our father wanted a better opportunity for his family. Really? Yeah. So you all came here? Mm -hmm. So you started... How long did you write? To, it took you to write the film. I wrote Silence in about three days. Three days. Yes, and then we shot for a day. So this was all pent up in you by being working at the hospital. Yes, yes. I wanted to shine my lens on an underserved uh, a group of people who are dealing with mental illness, which is black people, like our community. You know. So black people as a whole, as Nigerian. A whole. Just in general, Ab just, just in general, black people as a whole. But I still also wanted it to um, be focused on a woman. A woman. Yes. Do you think that we hold back a lot? We not we don't seek mental um, mental health because of so many things. The stigma, first of all, starts mm -hmm. with the stigma. A lot of people don't want to um, reveal that they're dealing with uh, mental illness. So some mm -hmm. people self-medicate, which now starts a whole nother problem with like addiction. And then um, there are people, even as women, were expected to be strong, strong black women. Mm -hmm. So it's almost like, okay, well, if you're dealing with depression, that goes against that mm -hmm. um, ideal of a black women just being strong. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, depression is an illness, just mm -hmm. like any organ of the body can get sick. You your brain can get sick it doesn't show that you're weak it just shows that you need treatment and um, a lot of times people say just pray about it you can pray as well but you also need therapy and treatment I think that was well said I never heard it like that thank you your brain is just like everybody yeah any part of the, your body Absolutely. Or organ. you can get sick at your hair follicles your scalp can get sick so mm -hmm. you think of what what your brain does it's like it's 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 who you are like your 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 spirit your brain is, is very very it, it's it's a big deal. So yes. if there's an illness there, it affects every aspect of your life. Wow. So it's very, very important. Well, thank you for staying after the live telecast. Ooh. This is Dietrich Kelsey, host of Sister Talk TV show. And as always, I'm wishing you peace, sister, love, and remember sister, to stay in the light. Sister, sister talk, sister, 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 sister talk, sister, 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 sister talk. Something on your mind anytime. I'm here to listen. Sister talk. When you need someone who understands, I know what you're missing. Sister talk. No matter what you're going through, don't worry, I ain't going nowhere. Sister talk. If you ever feel alone, say the word, I'll be right there. Sister talk. Sister. 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 Sister talk. Sister. 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 Talk.